All right, what's up, everybody? Um, welcome, welcome. Another day, another helmet. Uh, let me see. I got the pictures of kind of what this guy wants to. Um, so he sent us some pictures of a helmet, and it has like a drag. I don't. Is it a dragon? It looks like a dragon. I'm gonna call it a dragon theme. Um, but obviously we're gonna change the logos, we're gonna change some colors on it, but I think for the most part he wanted it kind of almost the same. So we're gonna kind of keep that. Um, and just trying to see here, probably the best way to tackle this is to... I think, uh... Just some freehand might actually just do the best. I'm gonna use the stencils to help lay it out. I think, yep, it just has some scales. Um, and the top here has some uh, kind of like different, bigger scales. But everything has a really hard, thick, dark outline, so it's like, I could probably just freehand it in. There's also no texture on any of this, um, on this helmet, so I'm probably gonna give it some texture, make it look a little nicer. Um, I c deleted the logos. So there was logos on here. I kinda went ahead and wide those out. Um, yeah, anyway. Just trying to absorb as much as this uh, as I'm looking at it. That way we can have a good idea. Cool. So we don't really have top teeth. The top teeth kind of just, I don't know. I guess they would have landed like somewhere here. So there's no top teeth. So we'll do the lip and the bottom lip going around. Yeah, what's up, Stephen Ward? How's it going? Howdy, howdy, sir. And then also he wanted these eyes to be red. <clears throat> so he has like a cage, um, right, that goes over the front and it's red. So he asked me if I could uh, make sure the eyes were red. I'm gonna mask off the area here for the eyes because I think I'm gonna lay down some pearl. And then I'm gonna lay some candy over the pearl uh, just to make it kind of shimmer and glow. Because uh, he said he wanted some some glowiness. Uh, so let's see here. What's up, 50 Nuts? Good, good? All right. So yeah, I hope everybody's been doing good uh, in the chat. Last uh, couple days can kind of <laughs> strange around here, I guess, or rough, I don't know. Just a series of unfortunate events, I guess is the best way to say it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, hopefully you've been having a better time than me. That's probably good enough, because we're just going to come back and freehand over the edge. I just don't want to get pearl up everywhere. We're going to try to keep it just kind of in here. We're going to use some pearl silver with some uh, uh, 4050 matte. And then we're going to put some candy red over it, just to kind of give this a nice uh, glow and shimmer. As where the rest of the helmet won't have that, so it'll be standout-ish a little bit. So I'm just kind of masking off the eye. The other side here. I'm just using eyeball science. Um. <laughs> eyeball science, bro. What's up, Theron? Thanks again. Are oh, you? You're very welcome, sir. But wait till I'm done, and then thank me. <laughs> we don't know how good it's gonna be yet. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, but I'm very glad uh, to do your helmet anytime, so 
anybody wants their helmet done, please do not hesitate to message me. Unless, uh, again, I guess if your helmet is just like all red, if you just want like, oh, my helmet's white and I want it red. Uh, yeah, you could go to your local paint shop anywhere and get that done. Just saying. Now, if you want a dragon theme or you want any any kind of uh, custom stuff, let me know. I'll hook you up. <laughs> so there we have both the eyes, right? Boom. So hold on, let me grab the pearl. And so one thing probably not visible right now uh, or that you guys can't tell is that I've actually laid a white sealer all over this uh, for adhesion. Um, so we don't want any of this coming off at any point. And uh, I did wet sand everything 800 grit um, and then what kind of went back with a thousand grit to even it out made sure to get all the edges and everything and then we hit it with a degreaser and it's been sitting here drying for the, about a couple hours now so, so I'm trying to be careful not to touch any of the outside I can touch the inside like this which is how you'll see me moving it but I'm not gonna touch any of this at all like I'm sure you might see me do like kind of like a little wipe but maybe it's just a piece of dust or something I'm just trying to get up but I'm not gonna like lay my hands on it I'll lay my hands over across the tape but not no fingerprints anywhere else just making sure to shake up the silver real quick So just gonna throw a little bit of silver in here. We don't need a whole lot. I'm gonna throw some 4052 mat because we want this to adhere and stick really good. Also, we want the candy to kind of flow into this. Uh, and then we'll lay bleed checker over the candy so the candy doesn't kind of spider or snake away from us in any kind of way before we start laying in with the I think I'm gonna just go in with gray first and kind of lay it all in and then we'll go back with the black and then I might hit overtones of like red like kind of like in the in the texture and stuff just to make it look like you know like like scales or like scaly skin because there's a lot of scales in that but it, they're they're a little it's kind of like if I just put the stencil over and just ran it over so we're gonna kind of add some little bit of effect to it and hopefully make it look pretty good so again just got a little bit in here turn this down uh what's up air todd air todd i'm sharing it thank you thank you sir what's up james melton how's it going air todd is like that uh it's like a ninja man he'd be in all the groups all right, so we're probably just gonna use something like this. This is just gonna be a really quick masking because we're just gonna take it right back off. Just want to contain the pearl and the candy into this area. I'm not going to be laying it super heavy, so we don't really need to go and grab the masking paper or anything like that. The masking tape at the edge will be good enough for now. I'm just going to try to block the overspray from going everywhere. Uh, what's up, Rick? Another helmet? Yeah, there's always lots of, <laughs> lots and lots of helmets. Not really. I when. When was the last time I did a helmet before this? I don't know. It's been a while, I'm sure. 
But we gotta jam this out, and then uh, trying to jam out a vehicle tomorrow, and then on Thursday I could lay down clear on all of them and be rocking and rolling for ready for the next project after that. So just trying to keep on pushing. Especially because I just I just had to go buy another compressor and that. That, that was not cheap. That was such an unexpected freaking series of events there. Echale ganas, of course, every day echale ganas, bro. I'm out here every day. So yeah, you'll probably see me go live probably tomorrow I don't know if tomorrow or the day after but I have to get this Sailor Moon card done and I've been thinking about doing it part of it on the stream I finally got all the pearl on there it's uh, ready with 4050 on it right now look if I just can I spin this one look. see right behind me is that nice little car but I gotta get this one done because this has kind of been on the chopping block and it's finally its turn, so we can get this one done. And then, like I said, probably Thursday or Friday, lay the clear on both of them. And then they'll be ready. So I'm just going to build up some silver here. And you might not be even be able to see it on camera too well, but... When you mix the pearlized silver with the, the 4050, it kind of just becomes like a pearl like uh, when you spray a pearl like with a clear and it just gives everything like a nice shimmer so uh what's up airbrush art and vida uh very good night my name and mm, uh all right cool thanks thanks thank you So just gonna build it up, just you know, doing a couple quick layers, giving it a second to dry, blow some air on it. Uh, so one thing that I was, I, you know, the 4052, a lot of people want to use heat on it, you know, because they a lot of people think like the the original line, and they think you know the heat pressing and all that, or they just want to get it dry right away. Uh, with the 4050, you kind of just want to give it air, and you want it air dry. Um, if you introduce heat, you build a like uh, a cap layer over the top, which could actually lock in some wetness or some moisture underneath, right? So you kind of want to let it just air dry and kind of let that that moisture out on its own. You don't want to build a hard layer over the top right away. So just giving it air like this with the airbrush is a good way of drying it and then just kind of lightly building it up again. Give it a second, just go side to side. You can see it's changing color a little bit, but not really. But uh, it is super sparkly in that area now. So we got that. almost tempted to just add some blood red candy right into this mix that's probably what I'm gonna do um, just to get that going so let that dry for a sec uh, Theron is it blood red candy or brandy wine that matches better I think the blood red candy is is really red Brandy wine is more like a, obviously like a brandy. Sometimes compressors blow. Ah, this guy's funny. I like it. I like it. No, actually, uh, so what happened is on Easter, I was out here laying the white base on this car behind me, and um, it started like uh, overheating, right? So I noticed it wasn't like actually ever turning off. So it was just kind of going forever. So I eventually, I was like, what the hell, man? Like, I, I freaking started investigating and stuff. Um, and so it took me, like, all morning to get the white base on that car. It was a nightmare. Um, 
so I go through all that um, and then you know the day after Easter yesterday I decide that I want to lay down the pearl on that car well again it didn't ever turn off and stuff like that and it just shut off never came back never came back on um, so upon an inspection so what's happened is the the pump kind of the seal on the pump was went out so it wasn't really pumping air very efficiently so it was taking forever to fill so it would cause the motor to blow out and it's just uh, yeah it's really old compressor though so I don't even think it's like I don't know I wouldn't consider it like a worth fixing or anything like that um, so we the guy came picked it up today he's gonna scrap it probably all it's good for at this point so it was used when I got it and it lasted five years still after that and uh, actually the original story of why we got that compressor too uh, big shout outs to Alan who originally gave us the compressor um, after our shop had gotten robbed uh, during the time that I was building this garage uh, I had a compressor like all our equipment was basically outside and we were you know we did our best to try to like conceal it and everything well somebody eventually just came through stole the compressor um, and and yeah so Alan was like yo you know don't worry about it I got this extra compressor if you want to come get it it's all yours and he actually brought it <laughs> and uh, yeah that compressor lasted me five years and you know luckily now five years later we were able to just go and buy a new one and hopefully that one lasts me five years as long too <laughs> if I get five years out of it I'm happy bro five years every day you know turning on and off every day like that not gonna lie that was more than enough for me to be happy with a free compressor all right <laughs> uh is the wicked line just better all around for helmets and motorcycles projects you have um so the wicked line is designed for like automotive practice so yes helmets and motorcycles uh, definitely the wicked line is what I would recommend all right so I'm just taking some of this blood red candy real quick and we're just gonna kind of build it up in towards the center but I would definitely want the edges to be the darkest points right, and you kind of want to leave that bright bright little spot in the middle there Now I'm using the mat, right? And the reason I like using the mat is because it dries up matte, obviously. So it dries up more like base coat. And um, it just kind of it feels more natural um, as when you're painting. It just kind of feels more like still the old school, which kind of I like. And it, it makes it easier to just see what you're doing because you don't have that glare, shine. But when you, we lay the clear over this, this is still going to get just as shiny and clear, you know, as the gloss would. So, because we still have to lay an automotive clear over this, right? We're going to have to let it dry. We're going to have to buff it and all that stuff. I'm just going to go back one more time over the edge right here. Get all these nice edges. get some bleed checker you can let this dry for a sec let me go get the bleed checker and we'll leave some bleed checker with the cage is more brandy than blood red uh yeah uh uh <laughs> let me see let me get the cage out we still have to lay black in there so it's kind of that thing of we're kind of gonna build up the color yeah, no, I think that blood red matched pretty good. We can still lay some brandy wine. We want it darker, but I think once we lay the dark black edge around, see, because it shines up pretty bright. And once we lay the black edge around, it's going to really give it that nice red 
the tone. Because this is just more like a dark red. It doesn't really have the, the purplish of the brandy. Uh, what was I coming for? Oh yeah, bleed checker. I got you though. We, we're gonna get those edges because <clears throat> we have to uh, kind of outline all this and shadow it in so that'll give it that nice little dark. Uh, but for now we can take this off. Yeah, because the brandy wine, it's kind of a deceiving name. It does have more of a purple hue um, to it, where it's like your cage really is just like a dark, dark red. So. And once we lay some dark tones on this, it'll be just quite all right. So there we go simple way to get in the eyes and you can see there like they they have that already that kind of glow so that's pretty good once we lay some bleed checker it might even pop out a little more um yeah so if anybody has questions about the bleed checker it's literally sprayed directly out of the bottle you don't reduce this make sure it's shaking up really good Uh, that's an amazing color mask. Hard to tell on the stream. Uh, I have been using a layer of 40, 30 or transparent to seal the candy too. Uh, I guess using a layer might help, but if though it really is more designed if you're going to lay, uh, I guess if you're laying it between candy coats. Uh, I would recommend the bleed checker as opposed to a coat of, um, you know, 40-30 or 40-50. Just because it, it will possibly get reactivated depending on how heavy you're laying it. And since I'm going to be going around with the black and stuff all around this, and yeah, I don't want the red to like seep out or anything like that because it's not really the 40-50 that that's gonna bleed out it's the dye right so if you get too many reactivating agents near the dye um, it really could spiderweb out or leak into other colors that you you know laid over the top that's why they have the bleed checker I have noticed it when laying, uh, you know, especially if you're laying multiple candy coats of different colors or doing artwork using candy and you're doing like, you know, you do a candy layer of red and then you want to do a candy layer of orange, but you've done details. Uh, something, sometimes that candy layer of orange or like laying white, you know, to add the details for the orange, sometimes that white will really drown out into the red. And then when you lay the orange, it almost just blends in. And with the bleed checker, that doesn't happen at all. It's really easy to build up really bright whites and darks and all the all the good stuff without having to need to do too much. So. Anyway, the special part of this, I think, the red is in there. Now, I think I'm going to start with this top because it has uh, probably the most unique design out of everything, right? Because I have my mosaic uh, stencil kick here, which really is going to cover a lot of the scales. And then we're going to use some texture effects or the skull texture from the skull number two to really build up some of the texture across the scales. Um, there's, he has a logo of a B, right, uh, that we want to put on, on one side or both sides there on, uh, but anyway, it's a logo of a B, like, uh, an old English B, and the rest of it's pretty much scales and stuff, so nothing too crazy. But yeah, the top has the, probably the most uh, unique P 
piece here and I'm just rinsing out the bleed checker out of this airbrush. I'll leave it here with some reducer. Uh, what have we got in this one? The red candy? Yeah, let's take this out as well. I really don't like to lay th let the candy or the 4050 uh, sit in the airbrush. If I'm done, I really would recommend rinsing it out. And I don't think we'll be using any more 4050 for the rest of this. I already have white sealer, like I said, so any Createx we lay on that is just going to stick onto the white sealer, and we're good. You just watched the agency stencil review. Yeah, those stencils are amazing. This one side, cool. And so we're gonna try to work our way through this helmet, the main mask piece today, and then I'll probably get the, the rear done tomorrow on my own. What up, Dennis? Mix up some gray. Get this out of there. I'm gonna start with a little bit of reducer here. Just a little dabity dab. We're gonna throw in some white. And this is the new wicked opaque white. Still the opaque. <laughs> opaque white. Uh don't need a whole whole lot of it but we're gonna make enough <laughs> all right so just give it one drop of black maybe two drops just give us a nice little medium tony Up the gray in that same line. What did I? All right, I guess we got the gray in the revolution. We're doing it. We're doing it big in the revolution. Cool. So just gonna kind of give myself a quick little shade line of where I want the scales to come. Circle there, and down this way. This right. Uh, let's see here. Get you guys angles. Angles is everything. That shadow line on on the on the screen. It almost looks like a bend on the helmet, but there's a shade line here and a shade line on the other side. See that? So we're going to start working in some scale designs, and I'm just going to kind of base them in real quick, try to get them even.
So the reason we're going to use a gray to build this outline in is I'm just going to go back over with black and we can really add in the shadows, right? Once we get done a good little layout, I can come back in and we start adding the little shading and, and details onto it. And then come back with the black and we just reinforce that and it just makes it so easy. Good shot of that. Alright, so get up to about this point and then we start having some horns. What machine do they use to make the HD stencils? I don't know, You maybe you go ask the HD stencils, bro. <laughs> Trade secrets are never told. What's the OPAC, bro? Two-pack, OPAC, I don't know. What's up, Chris? <laughs> All right. Uh, here. Bro, I don't even know what you're trying, trying to uh, say right now, you know? My brain doesn't comprehend the words. <laughs> Alright, so now that we have the design in there for this area, we can kind of go in. And I'm just going to start building up this whole middle section right here. I'm using the layout that we have. I feel like uh, freehand will give it a more of a kind of a living effect. You know? If I made cutouts for everything too, I think it would just kind of look so robotic. And like this, I could kind of build it up, give it texture, and then we come back, add some highlights. Mm -hmm. That goodness! And it was building it up all by hand. Always the satisfaction of that. So it's gonna look, it's gonna look um, a little bit soft, you know, just all gray, but once we come in, we're gonna cut in with the black. And definitely once we cut in with the white, it's gonna change. Not too happy with HD stencils. <laughs> Why not? What the hell? What, what could be wrong with HD stencils? From what I've seen, they, they just sell stencils. I don't know. <laughs> How could you not be happy with it? That's all I'm asking. What did HD stencils do to you, you know? They ain't never hurt nobody. <laughs> All right, this little bit of gotta have something better than this. Uh, you ordered a six by nine, and they sent you something smaller. Did you tell him? I mean, there's no point in yelling at me about it or telling me. The best place to, I mean, to, I'd probably send him an email and stuff. I don't see why they wouldn't send you another one. Unless, unless they knew for sure that they sent you the correct size. Which, that would be me, right? If you ordered a stencil for me, and then you're like, No, it's not the right size, bro. They made me the small one. Tell them to make me. And I'd be like, tell who? Tell me? Tell myself to make you a different one? Because that's who's making it is me. <laughs> Alright, so... Just looking at these scales over the eyes here. Yeah, what, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, then it goes four, five, six, and seven space back there. So, same thing on the other side. We're gonna get one, get two, and then three spike. There, sweet, and then we can shade in coming off of this. So we have that. You get it done right. I mean, I try my best. I, I don't know. It's not that hard, bro. You place an order, I make it, I send it off. I, I feel like it's, it's just like the airbrush, you know. People place an order for a t-shirt, I make it, I send it off. Same thing with the stencils, you know. The only thing with the stencils is that it's literally like an automated process, right? Like, I don't have to be interactive with you. Like, the website's there, you can place an order. I wake up in the morning and it's like, oh look, there's an order. I get it printed, you know, and we go, we both go on about our day. So in a way, it's almost better than selling uh, T-shirts, you know. Uh, the top here this is probably like the most unique piece and then once we get around the eyes and towards the bottom uh, the mosaic kit that we're selling now on the website this is it's almost like identical to the scales like pretty much identical to the scales that are on this uh, design so it'll move a little bit quicker I'm still going to go through the same process kind of base it out in gray and then we're going to come back in black Man, they didn't even respond to your email. Ah, oh, that's fucked up. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna be like, yo, what's up with this? People coming in my chat, bro. Talk to snack. What you got to say for yourself, homie? selling that whack shit you selling that whack shit don't be selling that whack shit <laughs> anyway uh, all right so we got this kind of in here and one of the ideas I had here was to give this some a little bit of a kind of scraped up you see this 
zoom you in maybe farther than that or not what's going on here okay maybe not well anyway let's see if we can get to focus at least what's going on with this camera there you go Jeez, now it won't. This camera's being difficult. Anyway, if you can see that texture. There you go. See this right there? Give some of that that goodness on there. You just move this little stencil around while you're spraying. It gives you a different little spray pattern on your airbrush. So. And it kind of make sure to just throw some of these little scrape redos around, you know, just to make the scales kind of a little bit more stand out ish. Uh, and then we'll shade everything in with black, which will really define everything. But it will give this whole thing kind of its own little flare ski, you know. Let me build up these eyebrows a little bit. Um, at least give myself some lines. And then, uh, we can go from there. So. Oh, the sweet, beautiful sound. I was very worried I wasn't hearing that sound with the last compressor. Now it's like, oh. Oh, the beautiful sound of air. and ready for the black do the black outline do some nice black outlines on all this and might as well build up the rest of that little eye real quick just up to the, front. the whole idea is to get this whole top done and that way we could switch the positions on the helmet and then uh, yeah, it'll make it easier to just work another area entirely
before we start venturing off into the side, you know, I could just get this whole top done. And then we could just lay the side out and do the whole side and then flip it, do the other side, and then stand it up, do the front. And then blend it all in together and get it all in there, you know? <laughs> uh, team is the helmet for. We need you a Terry Hill Ultra Quiet Compressor. Yeah, reach out to him, man. I'll take one. I'm <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that'll probably be the only one time it turns on. So I could use, like, one of the, these, my smaller compressors, I guess, but the reason I like using the big compressor for basically everything is because it runs off a 240 volt. And, like, it turned on right now, but we're using low pressure, so it probably won't turn on again, if maybe once, you know? And so that's, like, a huge savings on power. And considering I'm out here every day painting at least three four hours a day and I use more than just an airbrush uh, yeah it's really I don't know how well those silent compressors will hold up I've already talked about before how at one point one of those Terry Hill like the silent air I think they're called compressors that would have been the pinnacle of oh wow you're you're a professional airbrush artist <laughs> just from seeing them all the time in the magazines and stuff you know it was that thing of like uh, wow that's impressive I've always wanted one of those <laughs> but yeah, nowadays it's kind of like, oh, any compressor, I don't care. I don't care if it's loud, I just care that I'm painting. As long as I'm painting, I'll probably be okay. I mean, it's just, it's funny to think, right? Because I was a teenager. I didn't quite understand that I was already a professional fresh <laughs> artist. Like, I was already making money and selling shirts and doing all that crazy jazz. But to me, it just, something would have felt more official about having, you know, the silent compressor. It was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's the pinnacle of, And nowadays, I'll just take it for practicality. Like, sh yeah, sure. Silent. Not really because it's better, but, you know. Keep me from losing my shit sometimes because the sound be so crazy. <laughs> the silent compressor hooked up to a... What's up, Jerry? Jeremy? MOS? What's MOS? A member of service? I'm the best I know. All right. <laughs> the silent compressor hooked up to a rack of VLs. That'd be... Oh, man. That's a whole nother story entirely. All right. So I'm just going to take some wicked jet black. And we're going to start cutting in the details. I'm probably going to throw in just a little bit of reducer. Fire medic for a city department. All right.
What team? What team is it, Theron? What team are you on? Or is it just like a, a fire department team kind of thing? I don't know. Asking for everybody in the chat. <laughs> Nothing worse than equipment failure. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Alright, so let's see here. Now we have that back kind of all based in there with the gray. I'm just going to kind of try to cut in as much as this. I'm going to leave some of this alone so that once we move down, we could actually kind of detail that in together. And I'm just making sure to mix up my black and shake it up really, really good with the reducer before I start spraying. Yeah, I mean, there is nothing worse than equipment failure. It kind of, it was crappy. It, I panicked. It was like in the middle of laying pearl paints already mixed and yeah luckily i i still had you know the big uh t-shirt compressor well i say big it's 20 gallons and uh i was able to <laughs> just slowly you know get the rest of the the job i was working on done and yeah so again i'm just going to come in here with the gsi creos and a little bit of wicked jet black about 10% reducer. And we're going to start building in the shades and the shadows and the definition. You got to meet Terry Hill. You were still a bad airbrush artist. <laughs> uh, if the power went out, you could still paint for hours. Yeah, technically. Um, it would be really dark in here, but yeah. I technically could if I wanted to. <laughs> really, if the power went out, I would start rinsing stuff out right away. Um, because I, I wouldn't know how long the power would be out. So I wouldn't want to gamble on like, oh yeah, it'll be back in a minute. Like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> Let's rinse everything out and just call it a loss. Um, I'd be pissed if it came back, you know, an hour later right away or 30 minutes later. Around here, the power doesn't go out very too often. So when it does, you know, got to prepare for the worst. You can see I'm just cutting in with the black. And then I'm going to go back with some white. Going to load the white into the clip. And then we'll just lay in some nice, nice highlights.
Power Ranger helmet. What? Uh, you just jinked yourself by saying that. Nah, hopefully the power don't go out. It's been really windy today, so... With my luck, it will be like some power pole get, gets not taken down or something, and then the power goes out. So anyway, how was everybody's Easter? Everybody have a good Easter? Everybody had fun? Hopefully you weren't trying to get your compressor to work as well. Alright. See? See that? It's starting to look real nice. I better grab a sneeze. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Mm. Okay, so I don't think we need that right now. <laughs> you spent time with your mom and dad that's good it's always good to do that <laughs> every time you go outside and shoot clear it gets windy oh my god I 
I'm glad you guys had a good Easter. We had uh, burgers and sausage hot dogs. What'd you guys eat? What is everybody having Easter food wise? I just realized I had like the most American meal ever. I had hot dogs that had big thick sausages in them and the thickest burgers with lots of cheese. <laughs> um, but that's really what we had, so. All right, see now we got that black in there. Right, let's bring it around a little bit. I'm just going to kind of shade a little bit of these scales coming out of here. Just a little bit. Kind of going into that gray right there. I have to twist the helmet because the, the bend of the helmet there. So I have to paint this side going like this. That gives you, see, that's what the top of the eyelid looks like right there. You can see with that red candy, you see how that, you see how that shimmers right there, but not anywhere else? Ooh boy, that's gonna look real nice. Now let's get the other side done. Stop glorifying a little bit of work that we did. <laughs> Egg salad, egg salad's good. Oh my god, pizza with boiled eggs. What? what? Like, boiled eggs on the pizza? Bro, you're living in like the year 2100. What is this? 2100, yes, I said it. <laughs> 2100. You had ham. You're still trying to find the golden egg. You spent the day getting ready to head down to the Tamco Takeover. Oh, you're going to the Tamco Takeover? That's cool. I quite like the Tamco clears and stuff, so. I just wish there was a place in town that had them like in stock. Because a lot of time when I need clear, like I need it like yesterday. You had fish and salt and pepper squid. Ah, oh, bro, that sounds pretty good. I wish, man, I wish there was a place. There, it's just impossible. There's no place to get fresh seafood around here because we live in the mountains. So I have come to terms with that, but I wish there was, man. I really wish there was a place to get like fresh seafood. Cause, yeah. We have a, a Captain D's. That's as good as fresh as I'm gonna get.
you're talking to a man that got excited because they're talking about bringing a Whataburger to Colorado and I oh my god my mouth even now is just like mm, yeah Whataburger bro I'm down for Whataburger <laughs> just just put it in my mouth Magazine Getaway. What? William Klein in Connecticut. Oh, the Airbrush Action Magazine Getaway. Right? That's what you're talking about? Because, yeah, it had to have been when Airbrush Action was still around. I still find it crazy to believe they had all them ads. All them ads. It still wasn't profitable. How does that even work? Right, so I'm just seeing if some of these will work on here. Debating. I think freehand is the way to go again. Maybe if we add some of this. I'm really... The more I use this, the more I'm like starting to feel like it's becoming a necessity <laughs> to like have this stencil. <laughs> flesh out this uh, scaly bone look I don't care if it takes me longer we don't we don't even have to finish this today I could just go live again tomorrow we can finish it up tomorrow Yeah, Sally, that looks good. Give me that on a big fat plate. Is this a helmet for uses or shelf dust list? No, this is, he's going to use this. assume he's gonna use it <laughs> I hope so yeah this will be your main to play with that's a that's a good one right, just for your main games not for practice that that's probably the best way because then you feel more like oh yeah I can wear my special helmet today have a Terry Hill original that's cool he's still around I don't know I, I just feel <laughs> is it weird that feels like you're talking about him like he's dead or something I have a Terry Hill original Right, there you go. 
That's kind of cool, though. I still want one of those compressors. Somebody go and tell him I want one of those compressors. Until he sends me. Then I could show you guys how it works. Because I still don't even know how one of those actually functions. So. In the great world of technology today, the amazing thing is I show you guys something. And then one of you guys takes that idea and just runs with it. And then... A year later, six months later, we have a new iteration of that idea. Something that, you know, a lot of companies, that's why they try to keep their secrets. But I think we've, we're, we're kind of past that age. And anything that we see, we, we kind of instantly, it's, how is it made? How does it work? You know? At least I am, I don't know. But uh, yeah. I feel like there's silent compressors and it should be a technology that everybody should be able to get. By now, we should all have silent compressors. They've been around since I started airbrushing, my guy. And yet, we go to Lowe's and they still have the same loud ass fucking compressors they've had since like way back when and they're just incrementally getting them better and they're not even like they're still the same Two gallon from Harbor Freight converted to two <laughs> to make it a twelve gallon. Uh, yeah. Look at California compressors. Yeah, their their compressors are quieter, but they're not that quiet. And also the CFM that they offer per you know at higher volumes is not really it's not ideal. And I was looking yesterday and like. A, a freaking 60 gallon from silent from silent from freaking california air tools is a little bit ridiculous considering the specs and yeah i mean i have the sign uh, why do i keep wanting to call in the silent air i have a california air tools here that we use for usually like indoor events and stuff like that um one of the like the main reason I got it was to do events inside of malls. So like when Uggs or Sears or Sears L O L they're out of business. Uh, well, when, when any of the companies hire us, you know, we usually take a silent compressor. Like they put us like right at the entrance to a store or something, and then we're airbrushing there. And there's been times where they're just like, yeah, we don't care about the noise, you know, it'll attract customers. And they're right. Like, sometimes, yeah, just having the noise itself makes people just come and wonder what the hell the noise is. But, um, there's been other times where the manager's like, unacceptable. I did not know it was going to be this loud. So, let's only take the California air tool. And yeah, it's pretty quiet. I mean, you could talk right over it, so. But I have to watch, like, I have to be more mindful of my pressure when I'm doing that, and. Yeah. So. Anyway. We got this top down. The big box stores like the old loud compressors because they have contracts. Yeah, I guess. You need a Mike's Brush original. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could always commission a piece. So, okay, we got that. We got we got that top done, right? 
pretty much except we haven't uh, highlighted the eyebrows or nothing like that but what we're gonna do is just kind of shift the focus to this side and I'm gonna kind of build up uh, right right up in here I feel like I can't have to keep moving this camera but but yeah I'm gonna kind of just focus on this next area right here and uh, same procedure I'm probably gonna build it up with the gray and then I'll probably move over to the other side, build that up with the gray, and that way we kind of work our way down both sides. This is where I'm going to bust out this stencil, though. And I'm just going to take a quick look at this picture. And yeah, it pretty much, it's this all the way up to here. And then we got some horns coming back over here. And then we got some horn builders over here, but we could do that once we get there. But for here, we kind of need this uh, scale effect to just kind of go across here. So I'm just going to take some gray, and we're just going to, I'm going to lightly, very, very lightly. You see that? Just very lightly. Can you even see that? No, you can't see that. It's just very, look at that. Just very faint, right? And so what I'm going to do is use that as a basis for laying in where my stencil, my my scales are gonna go uh, first I'm gonna start around the eye right here so just like we did on the top I'm gonna build up a layer of you know freehand smaller scales kind of like an eyelid right next to the eye going all the way around kind of goes in there and then it blends out that way right and since we have this and then we have the lip that pretty much just cuts in right about here right, so we're just going to kind of give the shadow edge to the lip so this is where I laid in my scales right here and I'm just going to kind of go in and use those as a good little Pretty much just follow it along and it'll still have the freehand look because I'm obviously going in freehand and doing all this. And right about here we're going to build up some actual spikes. So right here we have... We're going to build up. Way one, two, five, six, seven, and one, and one, and one baby one right here. Right there, right there. Then we can just cover the rest of this in scales. So we're not going to just leave it like that. We're obviously going to come in and give them some texture and all that jazz. But it's always good to just get the outline in there. And once we come back in with the black, nice, nice, nice shadow off the eye. Simple. They have contracts with the energy companies. But even their manufacturing plans are silent. <laughs> uh, Fortress. Fortress compressors. I might have to look into that, I guess. Again, I just, I, I don't know if I feel like I need to remind you guys that I need like a big 60 gallon compressor or bigger in order to get a lot of the painting that I do around to get done. More air! Always more air, never less. Yeah, I have a ton of compressors as it is. There's like two, sit, three, three sitting right there. The big t-shirt one's over there. The other flat one is over there. 
what is that three four five and then the big huge one and then we scrapped the other one today like there's just so many compressors right now i don't really need a i don't really need any more compressors after the one i bought <laughs> i'm good right now uh so yeah let's just shade this in and then we can kind of move on to the other side Yeah, and uh, the one I bought too, it's just a really big, you know, Craftsman compressor, but uh, it also mass matched our power, so it's just, you know, double pulled 240 volt, really nice. You can see it filled up that one time and it has a kick back on and we're still talking about it. Bro, why are we still talking about the compressor? Guys. <laughs> uh, what's up, Carl? I feel like I need it to be propped up a little bit. So what do we have here? Can we put it on this? That'll work. Right there. Beautiful. in here just nice and quickly still come back in with the black I'm only going to do up to there because we're going to just come back over there and then before I move away from here take <laughs> I'm just going to kind of lay this in around, not really trying uh, a specific pattern or anything. That's probably good. But if you can see the way I'm just kind of like squiggling it around, it gives the scales kind of... Move the camera when you move the stuff! Anyway, um, it gives the scales like this really nice, like rough, you know, scraped in dry. Dry is the word? Yeah, dry is the word. That's the word I'm looking for. Then we come back and the black. Plumb the tank from your old compressor to the new one. No, it's already gone. It's scrapped. I, I don't have space for that either. Otherwise, I would. But having two of those big old things would just take up a whole section of this place. We're good. We're good. We're good. We, we got the compressor fixed. We're good. We don't need any more compressor. Thank you guys, though, for all the input. I'm sure somebody else in the chat is probably reading that going, Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do that? that's you speak up so these guys can help you they're, they're really enthusiastic about their compressor right now that's all I gotta say <laughs> uh. alright then I'm gonna work in all these little in between cracks little by little using the, the gray right and all I'm kind of doing is going around both sides of it let me see if I can get you guys a little closer I feel like right there I'm gonna block it with my hands though but I'm gonna see there you go so I don't know if you can tell but I'm kind of going in 
one side. And then gonna kinda hit the other side. Just bring it around a little bit of shadows. So you want to kind of end up with like these two little lines next to each other. But that's kind of what gives it the crack effect, right? As if it's like those two lines. I don't know. Something about the having the double line and having them come together and apart just makes a really nice effect. And when you combine it with the pattern like the one we did, well obviously it starts looking like scales, but just in general if you want to make cracks. Having two really fine lines next to each other instead of just one line, you know, kind of gives it a more cracked out effect. I don't know. Cracked out, that's the word. <laughs> See that? blending right into that those gray scales right there and then we also got like a shadow line kind of going down from the eyelid see that it gives it a cool little like eyelid effect it's not just flat or more scales connected to the eye you know it's just kind of like it actually has its own you can see it almost like opening and closing it and these scales would stretch and do all that good jazz. And just go around. Now I did have these covered right for uh, when I was laying the white sealer in. You don't really want to get too much build up in those so when I lay the clear, I'll make sure I'll cover those up. But getting a little bit of airbrushing artwork in there will be just fine. It's really when you get big buildup that it becomes really hard to get the, the bolts back into place. So. Oh, oh. I didn't mean to do that. Ugh. Drop the lid. Spin this a little bit right there.
same thing, just kind of going to take some of this. And just add some of these. Just trying to be careful of where I actually land the shade and make sure it lands inside of the scale. stencil on purpose while you're spraying right so it gives it that that kind of like I don't know what to call it kind of almost a, a ghosted in effect or like a swaying stencil effect and then we highlight then we highlight and come in here do is bring out certain edges right we don't want to we don't want to white everything out that we just did but when you lay it in over like you'll notice some of those uh, grays will like blend in and they get quite all right so is this one louder than the last one on stream is that what you guys are saying the pump on the last one was shot so I wouldn't even doubt it. So it just gives it a nice Daily skin. Just on one part. So, so now that we have that done, I'm gonna kind of come back and highlight this little area before we uh, kind of switch back over to the other side. So we should just get this in there. You guys should still be able to hear me, right? Even though I did a compressor. This one for sure fills up a lot quicker than the last one did. The last one just seemed like it ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. And I was spraying too the whole time I was running, so. Are you gonna fill the lines, fill the voids between those lines? Or is it a cool effect? Fill the voids between the lines. Which lines? Like this lines? Or the ones on this lines, I think that's it. I think the whole thing is that to create like a shadow from both the scales and kind of leave that middle part in between the scales to kind of show in the gray. Uh, which kind of is what gives it that, that little bit of depth right into the crack, you know? Especially once you lay the clear over it and you get the. You know, the colors really kind of deepen out. Having those two lines right next to each other, that's kind of what I'm talking about, is to create a crack. Uh, it's better to have two lines right next to each other as opposed to just one. Something I do is on skulls a lot too, when I do cracks on skulls, I'll do like one line and then I'll kind of do like another one that's kind of surrounding it. Also on lightning, it's a really good idea to do kind of like multiple strokes. Uh, just a tip. You don't have to use it. You can take it or leave it. 
You could take it or leave it. It is not something that you have to do. Anyway, see that right there? That looks. It's looking pretty solid. And look at that eye. Look at that eye. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that eye. Uh, this feed is on Facebook. It's much more clear than it was on YouTube. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's probably just your phone. Not gonna lie. Uh, the quality is usually a lot better over on YouTube, especially for the VODs like later. Uh, the quality on Facebook is just doo doo. Um, so just, just an FYI, I have a little bit more control on the quality over YouTube than I do on Facebook. But YouTube servers can sign, kind of sometimes be iffy. So it depends on your internet connection. But uh, yeah, well, let's move on to this other side. Same process that I used over here. We're going to kind of leave this. You see these four scales over here. Kind of bring it in over here. Going to kind of do the eyelid there. Then use the stencil. All right. What's up, Thomas Thompson? Uh, work both sides at the same time. I'm I'm basically M, right? So I started in the center, then I moved that side, then I'm gonna go this side, gonna kind of try to get to the match, and then we're gonna move down and kind of do that. And as you can see, I'm kind of leaving some of this here because we're also gonna kind of stand the helmet up and then do the front at the very end. I uh, want that'll be where we meet, you know, both sides. We could just do the front and stand it up, and we don't have to have it. We don't have to have it up like this. So, but yeah, I mean, I like I literally I st studied this design since Thursday, um, Thursday, since Sunday when the compressor started having issues. I was, I was like, maybe I should just work on that little helmet, you know, while I'm doing this. And so I started looking at the design and I was debating on like what was the best way, like the best method of attack, you know, to, to get it done. And I did, I debated on like, should I make cutouts for like all the scales and now I could just put the cutout and just spray around the cutout and, you know, or should I make like a big outline and then I could kind of just put the outline on one side and transfer it to the other side. You know, but then I was like, man, I have to put that logo on one side and it's not going to be the same on the other side. It would be reversed and that doesn't make much sense. And yeah, so I kind of just ended up deciding that the best way to go about it would be to do it freehand. I, I ain't scared no freehand, bro. Now, the picture he sent me definitely looks like they just kind of taped up the whole helmet and then were just kind of like piece by piece. But uh, it's. I don't want to say it's noticeable because, I mean, it's. It's noticeable for sure, but it just makes it look so. I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. It's like cookie cutter, you know what I'm saying? It looks like it was just all just cut and then you know paint by numbers I hate it I hate it a little bit I just want it to be I want some skill just put, put some skill in that shit <laughs> uh, watching a pro work uh, pro is a very loose term and some people would take that and run with it but not me I'm yeah, I'm a pro. That, that doesn't mean anything. Everybody's a pro. If if you if you paint something, you charge some money for it. You're a pro. Guess what? That, that's literally the definition of it. <laughs> I wish I could put the camera on the other side now because I feel like I'm painting on this side and it's like sideways. But No, but thank you though. Thank you. I, I hope um, you know, I hope I inspire you in the next generation. And I wish you all the best of luck. And yeah, I know I've had lots of fun my time painting, and I hope everybody else does too. And that's about all I can say about that. And hopefully we cross paths and we meet sometime. And 
have some fun together and all that jazz. So, that's all I'm gonna say. Don't glorify me in any way, please. I'm not a role model, nothing like that. I'm, a, I'm just a normal person. Sort of like wood grain, you see faces everywhere. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I have that thing with trees. If I, if I stare at trees, my eyes start playing with me like I'm, I'm seeing faces in the trees. Is that weird? Boy is like a printer, bro. I just freaking moving my arms and twiddling my finger, and it's like stuff is appearing. I don't even know how I do it sometimes. There you go. So we built it up in gray a little bit, and then we're just gonna come back in with the black. Same procedure as the other side. I noticed nobody said nothing about seeing the faces in the trees. It makes me feel weird now. Thank you guys for making me feel weird. <laughs> also, I was supposed to have this ca other camera, so it kind of seen me talking. But I feel like it was been facing the wrong way the whole time. So Anyway, I have it over here so that when I look at the chat, you guys can see my face. And if I feel like I'm talking to the chat, I feel like I'm, I'm almost talking straight to you right here. Look at you. You look good. What's up? What's up, homie? <laughs> Not weird. All right, cool. I'm glad. Richard Hernandez on the tube. Uh, yeah, Rich Hearn. Rich Hearn YouTube channel. Um, reminds me a lot of uh, myself and basically just all the events and stuff I love watching this channel well I, I should say I like watching his videos where he's airbrushing I don't know if he's done n new videos or anything like that I haven't I haven't watched his channel in a while but I know he that man gets down on some shirts I know everybody's jumping on the YouTube craze lately so I don't know if he's put out videos or not, but 
I know his videos where he's just like jamming at the fair or wherever he's at. Ah oh, man, those just bring back memories. It's like, ah, oh, I miss it. I miss it a lot. Especially because these last year sucked, man. Like, I was ready, bro. I was ready to start doing some fairs, some freaking markets, go around doing some markets, some events. Maybe get, you know, locked in, just doing some kind of traveling show stuff. Anything, bro. I was just ready to get out there. Right? Because the year before that, I had hurt my back, my hip, all that. I was having all those issues. So then this last year, 2020, you know, 2019, I got all those diagnoses with my hip and my back and, you know, started learning how to deal with that. So then 2020, I was kind of just, you know, focused on my health and, and trying to get it all serious. And for the most part, I can, I can stand and do, you know, what I want to do. I'm up to jogging, basically. I could, I could, uh, I could stay on the treadmill for like an hour, two hours, no problem. But jogging or like doing any kind of like bouncing on my back uh really freaking hurts so it's really hard for me to like actually jog but i have started jogging and hopefully soon i can make it up to running and stuff i have an exercise bike that also gets lots of use my treadmill gets lots of use my ab my ab my wife bought uh one of those uh, db method uh machines for doing squats and stuff so i've been doing a lot of that too the only one that seems to notice is my wife. Oh, your arms are looking really big. Wow, your pants are feeling really better. Everybody else hasn't said anything. So. I know for one, I just feel better. So like, I'm a, I have more energy, like even right now. Just talking, I feel like I'm, I'm pronunciating better and speaking a little bit more clearer than I would normally. Um, and that's just from exercising every day trying to get rid of a uh, crappy food out of my diet as much as I can and eating protein and yeah trying to stay off of pain pills as much as I can ibuprofen I'm looking at you ibuprofen um so yeah but then that whole you know anyway we're back to where I started uh I was getting ready to do the events and stuff, and then freaking COVID hit. So then none of the events happened, and in fact, the events got canceled. And ugh, man, it's just been such a freaking mess last year. And then this year is kind of, you know, stuff is slowly opening back up, but we'll see what happens. No one else sees you naked, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, but still, like, just, you know, my clothes is fitting better. My shirt's fit better. I'm not sitting up here, you know, stretching out my shirt to make it fit and nothing like that. I don't know, bro. And I don't really care. I'm not doing it for anybody to notice. I'm doing it for myself. And basically to be able to keep working and doing what I love. Because I, I love, like, I love doing stuff like this. Don't get me wrong, but... There's something about painting at an event and having the music and the people and everybody's watching you paint live and, you know, having the questions and it's just such a, you know, everything's moving so fast and, you, you know, it, it's just, there's something about it that I really like. I like working at t-shirt shops. I like working at events. It's kind of what I like to do. So... That's why I tell people, if you ever have the chance, if there's a t-shirt place next to you somewhere and you're into airbrushing, just go and ask if you can help out. And it's fun, you know, it's just, it becomes fun. It's more fun than sitting in here by myself. And I mean, I like talking to you guys, don't get me wrong, but imagine if I was talking to you guys in person, bro. Like, you guys could be there watching me in person. <laughs> It's a lot more fun when it's in person. That's all I'm gonna say, so. Anyway, we got uh, kind of most of this in here, so I'm just gonna throw some white. Them good old white. So yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at now. And I still, like, literally have everything ready to just 
Okay, it's everything looking good. Let's go and hit the market or this event. And we're I have everything just ready to just get loaded into a car and we can go set it up. It's literally just sitting in boxes and stuff. Put away. All my designs, everything. <laughs> so that's just the truth of it. Like I like painting, I like doing fine art, all that stuff, but Man, if there isn't something about just having the people there watching you and having a good time, being able to dance and make jokes and, you know. <sighs> I miss it, bro. Luckily though, like you guys, you guys, you guys pulled me through, bro. I asked, like, you know, support of the community. I didn't know if this was a thing I want. I should have kept going, like the YouTube and stuff. And you guys actually like showed up and were like, nah, like we got you. People sent, like, the, during the toilet paper shortage, James said the toilet paper at canvases. You know, Createx was a big part in that too. They sent us paint and they've, you know, from then on forward, they've continued to support the channel, which means a lot, you know. But I think, I think, you know, every everybody knew kind of what was happening, you know, everybody in the Eric Converse community. Um, and yeah, there's probably still a lot of guys out there that are just, you know, hurting inside and not just letting it out i'm not the guy to just hurt and not say something man if i start hurting i'm you guys going no shit is getting rough around here bro it's rough but if it's going good i'm not even saying that. if stuff's going good let's it's going good let's just keep on trucking right <laughs> i will follow you in my work car that'll help with your running out <laughs> yeah if you stay behind me and just make sure you're busting nip my heels i'll make sure to keep running <laughs> Uh, you're an old carny, yeah, exactly, like that, I kind of like that vibe, that, is that bad, I don't know, I don't think it's bad, I just, that's just what I like, and I, yeah, I just like having the fast-paced atmosphere, that everything is just, you know, just kind of moves at such a pace, anyway, we got the lip coming up here, and then it's gonna kind of drop down, uh, going this way and right here in this area because this only has this one piece right here this is where we're gonna put in that old English B right up in there um, so yeah uh, just trying to see this design real quick all right so we got the lip coming all the way this way here and then we're gonna do the inside drop. Go to there, and that's where the beam will be. Bring the slip out this way. Cool. Then we have the kind of the webbed skin that kind of connects the jaws here. Going this way. Up to there. light texture here on the lip. Yeah, I could definitely appreciate like carnival people and stuff like that. I Yeah. So like one of the things too I was thinking about doing last year was doing the state fair that happens here where I live it happens here in the town in this city and uh, what what they ended up doing was having a drive-through fair so people were able to like drive through and, and get like their food and stuff so they didn't have any vendor booths or events or anything like that going on which you know that means no me no nobody else only food which, you know, if you sell food, congrats. Um, I hope you made your money. <laughs> uh. But 
I know a lot of the restaurants are hurting, so I can't even be mad. I can just imagine, bro. You have a business where you rely on people coming in. That shit gets shut down. Fuck that. Like, that's just devastating. No matter how you look at it. All of a sudden, you get told, no, you know what? You can't have people in here. Alright, I'm just kind of looking at this design right here. He has a couple of um, horns here. What's up, Mikey? <laughs> Chris, I just realized you said you'll follow me in your work car. Not your personal car, your work car. Why your work car, bro? <laughs> You're like, fuck that, I'm not gonna use my own gas to help him lose weight. <laughs> I'll use the company gas for that shit. <laughs> So yeah, my mornings have basically turned into that. They've been turned into working out or, you know, getting on the treadmill. I hate saying working out because it makes it seem like I have, like, a super, you know, workout routine or something. But it's just like, yo, I get on the treadmill, I do some weights, you know, I try to get myself sweating as hard as I can for a good hour, and then I go on about my day. So, I don't even know. It seems to be working. I feel stronger. I feel better. And hopefully, you know, yeah. In the long run, hopefully it just pays off. That's all I want. If I could add 10 years to my life, or, you know, another couple of years of standing up, that'd be great. That'd be really great now. Oh, your work car, your, your cop car. <laughs> You're the cop car. I'm just going to sit there and stare at you like, what you want? Ain't nobody call you. What you want? <laughs> I know nothing. What you want? Like, I love police, but I hate all the questions. <laughs> Is that bad? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so... Now, I don't know what the, um, the intention here was, but on the pictures, uh, the artist kind of left a white in the mouth area. So there's a black shadow coming down off the lip here, and off of the lip at the bottom there's also a shadow but then there's white all along this edge I uh, I'm gonna follow the design and leave that white there um, so I'm just gonna yeah leave that there but for a second I'm just gonna take this piece of paper I'm gonna draw up this old English E and cut it I mean B and we're gonna cut it out real quick So let me 
just draw this real quick. Um, so it's just a B. Like that. Uh, pretty simple. Straighten this out. Straighten that out. Straighten this out. Looks pretty good. Alright. And I believe this B is supposed to be white, so we're going to just see that there I've drawn it on there we're just gonna cut that out real quick with the blade that should all just come out in one piece so how many of you guys uh, actually cut stencils by hand I know there's a lot of guys that are spoiled nowadays and they refuse to cut anything by hand. I almost feel like I'll waste more time going over and getting the plotter going, loading it up with material and then having to cut it, having to weed it and coming to sticking it on. Like, look, I'm almost done cutting it already. But I guess the thing is you have to be good at drawing. I have met a lot of airbrush artists too that are, are like, I shouldn't say they're not good at drawing, uh, I guess that's the wrong term, never mind, I don't know, not as creative is what I'll say, um, but they still make, you know, get along just fine, get around just fine make enough money but I have seen a lot of them are pretty generic there you go look at that that didn't even take no five minutes see if we could just put that right up in there boom let's get some tape rolls out here yeah, all you guys do? Good. Good, good. I'm glad all of you guys still cut stencils by hand. It's very necessary to cut stencils by hand. And it should also work as a constant reminder that how did they do it in the olden times? If you ever have any questions, this is how I always like to think about things it's like well how did they do it before that was around <laughs> they had to do it somehow like metal forging and stuff is one of those things where it's like oh man how did they do that before they did this like nowadays they have all the cnc machines and all the milling and stuff and it's just like crazy to think like how did they do that before There's our B. That B can be red or white, your call. Oh my gosh, you're killing me, bro. 
Uh, I think we're gonna do white. White, I think it'll work because it's already there. Uh, I could add red around it or something if you wanted. I think white will look good though, and it almost looked like it was like stamped onto the character. I don't know. Ugh. Ugh. But anyway, let's get this kind of in there. Just a quick little shadow all the way around. And while it's on there, I'm just going to take some scales right off of it. On the picture, the scales kind of bleed into the bleed into the, the lettering. So I'm gonna just kind of do a little bit there, and then the lip kind of comes down and around. But there's still scales kind of coming this way, so do a little bit of this, and then we'll leave the rest of that for when we stand it up. Cool. I think I am going to kind of bleed the, the scales into it, but I kind of do want this uh, outer defining scales kind of just come on off of it. So that when we go back in, we just kind of lay a little bit of gray lines and it'll look kind of, it's scaly, but, but not part of the main structure, right? You like to forge when you can? Oh man, that's crazy. Yo, that's crazy that all of you guys do it by hand still. That's very good. I'm very proud of you guys. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Especially for like one-off projects, right? So, I know I sell the stencils and stuff, but... Um, if you look at my stencils, my stencils are not meant for like one-time use. Uh, they're kind of meant for like, oh, like you're gonna do this, like you're probably gonna need this a bunch of times, so you should, you know, it's probably gonna help to just have it. Um, I totally could. I could follow the trend and just make a ton of skull stencils every day. Just draw skulls and just keep putting up skull stencils every day. That seems to be the trend. Right, I'm just going to go around this edge with a little bit of black here. like a shape <laughs> that scale stencil looks like a dolphin killer uh, this one oh yeah yeah don't don't leave these out in the ocean or anything like that definitely get stuck in some birds or something I'm sure you guys dis don't dispose of your stencils improperly you were all responsible individuals around here only recyclables. <laughs> <coughs> All 
All right, so now I'm gonna start back up over here at the top and we're gonna just kind of work our way down with the black. And uh, yeah. Then we'll move back to, over to the other side and then I think we can stand up and do the front. And then we'll give it a good look over, see if there's anything kind of we need to hit or fix or adjust or anything like that. Yeah, and some of those stencils too are, are like like the bricks kit right like the actual bricks part of cutting like the lines and stuff it's not actually hard it's just very time consuming if you do it by hand right like measuring all that out and cutting it out is, is very time consuming but in order to offset you know like I know you guys can make the, the bricks kit I threw in the texture kit with it which that would take you some time to make if you're trying to make it by hand um, and I know this because the machine takes time to make it, so <laughs> if you were trying to cut that by hand, especially onto mylar, it could take you a little bit of time. So, I just try to make it worth it, man. I know I've used uh, all of those stencil designs, I've used them at least once or twice probably way more than that but you know they're ones that I know I've used multiple times and I've had to cut like show up to a place and they're like hey could you do this and then it's just like oh crap all right yeah I can you just have to give me an hour to get ready you know and I have to sit there and cut a stencil and they're just looking at me like uh aren't you gonna paint something and it's like yeah I'm, I'm hold on like I'm I'm getting there I'm getting to the part where I'm gonna paint <laughs> And like in the mini mini effects kit too, there's the ca carbon fiber stencil, uh, which is kind of one of the stencils I'm, I'm a little bit proud of, because it's really hard to cut and keep all them little squares together. Oh boy, it's hard. fading in right here but then it just kind of fades to white right there so keep it that way Flippers bondage. <laughs> little break here in a minute I gotta go use the restroom real quick probably get myself a fresh water
back. We'll get this sucker baby all done today. Well, except for the back end, the clear coat and everything. But we'll get this main helmet piece done today. Should be a good catch up for making up for the past couple days. It just starts looking cool when you start getting a lot of it done. It's like right now you start looking at this whole piece and you're just like, whoa, yeah. That's starting to look pretty cool. <laughs> Nobody in their right mind is going to try and block the person wearing that helmet. Goal? Yeah, it's right over there. <laughs> Yeah, from what I hear though, the feedback that I get from from the helmets that I've painted is that when people see you have a, a nice painted helmet, they seem to want to hit it just a little bit extra more than they would normally. You got people saying, ah man, when I didn't have the helmet, like nobody ever cares. Now I got the helmet and got these guys coming up and trying to, you know, bum rush me. That that texture just really kind of sets off the scales. I, I just want to show you guys. I want to show you up close. Alright, so you see like that little bit of just that little bit of mmm. It's enough to make the scales look like, you know, they've been through some shit. just get this worked up here to be on this B and then we can switch over to the other side and I believe I said I had to pee but the feeling went away so we'll just give it another little minute or two right, and here we have the B so I'm just gonna outline with a little bit of black on this back side come back in with the gray and we're going to kind of grow in some of the scales into it. Are you going to candy over that? No, no, no. We're just going to keep it white like this. Um, yeah. Shoot, if we were going to candy over it, I would have just laid silver over the whole thing and stuff. That would have really brought out the candiness. Get some 
gray. And we'll just do some scales kind of coming over. back with the white we'll kind of wipe these out a little bit just so that they're really faint you can tell their scales still even on the B it's kind of like a, a you know a birthmark on the dragon is what I would say something on his face not quite sure where it came from but it's obviously part of him My bad. My bad. There you go. What's up, honey? What's up, Jeremy? Um, what's up, Richard Croft? You think Bigfoot is blurry? That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. So let's get some white highlights in here. Then we can switch over to the other side. Right on, thanks, Jeremy. It's getting there little by little. So the white here in this instance is just kind of to blend in and, and deafen in kind of the gray and the black texture in together and when you lay a little bit of white over them it kind of kind of gives it a more like lived in look over the, the texture stencil there kind of gets rid of some of that hardness but also kind of blends it in because the white the white's not going to just fully cover it right away it kind of like softens it up and puts it into the puts it into the skin if you will So see here, got this area right here, I uh, gotta kind of finish up this little piece, and I think I want a tooth, just come right here. So look like that tooth is just being held in place by that bee right there. Let's just 
take a little bit of this gray and put a little bit of a shadow back here. That side, Let's see. Now we could do the other side. Woo! Just what you guys always wanted. <laughs> right on, Jeremy. We'll see you later. You drew four Disney characters now. Cool. Hell yeah. Um, so see here again. We have the lip. Comes out of here. Kind of comes up to this point. Mm, yeah, and then we cut it right before it gets to here. Brought it down. Got a good, like, finger width. All right, perfect. Bring it all the way around. Cool. Then we got some horns. Kind of in between here. So let's go ahead and uh, put one. Kind of coming in right here. And we're gonna make this one come over here. This kind of reminds me like of a horny toad. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a horny toad in person, but it essentially looks like a miniature dragon. And uh, where I grew up in El Paso, Texas, uh, they're just everywhere. I would say they're worse than rats, but not really. But they are everywhere out in the desert out there. And they're cool. They glow in the dark. So like if they, they like to sunbathe on rocks and stuff. So then you just hang out and wait for it to get dark. They literally glow. It's really cool. Nice. So. And they look just like this. They have scales and then they got like those little horns that come out like their lips and around their cheeks and stuff. Yeah. Pretty cool. down there's no logo on this side no lettering on this side so you can just bring it all the way down build up the texture of the lips and I didn't even realize I had been long like on this long already I just realized what time it was I don't know, maybe we'll come back tomorrow, finish it tomorrow. There's not much to finish, and I'll have the stuff ready for the for the back, for the back of the helmet, so. Make it a two-parter? What do you guys think? Make it a two-parter, or should I just keep going so I can't, and then, yeah, and then you guys don't get to see the back, and maybe no stream tomorrow, but. Dude, if I leave it till tomorrow, I can come 
come in the morning, start working on this car. And then by the time it comes to 5 o'clock, I can have everything ready for this. Have a portion of that car finished. <sighs> and that just sounds like an overall better plan, to be honest with you. unintentional venom thing going on with the mouth so venom actually has more of a unintentional kind of like a snake thing going on with the mouth <laughs> to where it, like it has like those uh, extended portions of the cheek that spread uh, snakes kind of have that like a lot of reptiles have that uh, including horny toads <laughs> But yeah, I got I got what you're saying. Yeah, it has that, like that stretchy, stretchy mouth look. So yeah, I think I'm gonna finish the uh, up to here, right? Just like we did on the other side. And then I'll leave it for tomorrow. We'll come back tomorrow, finish her up, get her all cleared up, and that'll give me some time in the morning to uh, work on the on the Sailor Moon car. Get some more progress done on that because I need to push it out. And then both of these will be ready for clear over the weekend. And they can dry. We can buff them out Monday, Tuesday. And we can get them out of here. And we can move on to the next one. Yeah, two-part. It's going to be a two-party. I didn't realize it was taking me that long. But like I said when I started, if it takes me uh, two days or three days to, to finish it, I didn't really care. I wanted to look a certain way, and that's, that's what I'm going to go for. Right. Free-handed, I want the, the scales to kind of have that texture and have that look. I definitely wanted the eyes to have the candy with the pearl and yeah we're building it all up in nice and slowly and evenly and uh, yeah just not the same we can't come back tomorrow and finish it up you know take a little extra time it's all right idea is to kind of leave it so that when I stand it up then I have that front area to kind of work work it in together so at this point I'm pretty much not even looking at the picture I'm just going side to side on helmet just to make sure I kind of match this side with that side as much as I can and um, you know I kind of have the, the, the layout already ready and it's okay if we give it our own little flair right we don't want to just copy it exact so that's what we're doing that's what we're doing So yeah, anybody who's looked at like a, a dry skin kind of reptile, because I know there's like snakes, but like there's the snakes are kind of deceiving because they have like that glossy 
kind of scales, and their scales are more uniform, you know. But anybody who's ever looked like a, at a desert kind of a reptile, you know, they have more of like this type of scales where it's kind of more dry, scaly. Um, then they have like texture over the scales, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do with that. That stencil real quick. What's up, CB Graphics? Easy to get lost in the work. What time? What is that? Exactly, man. Sometimes it's just... Sometimes time is just not on your side. Time doesn't care what you gotta do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we got it almost all the way there, so it's not a big deal. What is this time concept you speak of? I have to keep moving the camera for some reason. Is that just like my OCD? You think taking over? Just to, you have to keep moving the camera, or is it is it just generally me just looking over and realizing the camera has a bad angle? What do you guys think? I don't know. You guys never complain about the angle of the camera or nothing, so I know blurriness. You guys don't accept any kind of blurry, and you guys are like, ah, it's blurry. <laughs> Nah, that's good though because I, I wouldn't have noticed if you guys wouldn't have put it in the chat. Definitely, if you spam the chat, it catches my eye like out of the corner of my eye, and I'm just like, what what's going on in the chat? You know, right away. It starts moving a little too fast, and I know something's wrong. sketch with the airbrush before darkening so I went in with gray and I'm going back in with black so yeah I guess yeah. technically yeah because black is darker than gray Not always the case though, it's just this particular project is the way I decided to build it up and make it happen.
I definitely, definitely like this compressor a lot more. Like it, it literally ran, what was that? Like two minutes, maybe two minutes? Not even. I was trying to like time it in my head, but I'm not sure how long that was. That was pretty quick, all things considered. You're hearing two airbrush right now. What airbrush are you spraying with? This is the GSI Creos 289. The one I have linked um, in the video description. I actually still don't own a Micron. I'm kind of that, I'm that one that defies what you need or what they say you need. So everybody goes, you need a finer needle to make fine lines. And I'm just like, bro, it's 0.5 is all I need to get it all done. It's nice to have finer needles, yeah, but it also has its drawbacks. Like spraying thicker paint is not really a thing. And sometimes, sometimes thicker paint is what you need. To get nice hard lines, nice even crisp lines. Yeah, I don't know. One day I'll get a micron. They're just so expensive. And nowadays there's so many airbrush choices. Like there's so many companies. It's a little bit ridiculous. But also very awesome because I like competition. Definitely, I'll still end up buying a Micron somewhere along the line just to do comparisons with other airbrushes and stuff, but for the most part, I feel like I'm going to go through a lot of airbrushes before I get to that one. Like, we're, we are still reviewing the sub $200 airbrushes. I still have not ordered an airbrush that's over 200 bucks for review or any purpose and, and right now with the because of covid and everything the prices are kind of getting a little bit inflated so i don't even know how much how many more i'm going to order at this moment i'm just gonna i might wait for the market to chill out a little bit before i start doing too many more reviews I know Spray Gunner's been trying to keep their, their prices pretty good, but uh, on other marketplaces, like some of their prices are getting outrageous. I'm thinking about picking one of those up. Micron too expensive. Yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> You're doing that with a 0.5? Crazy. No, actually, this is, a, I think this is a 0.3 um, needle here. I'm just saying, though, I... I could do this with a 0.5. This is not nothing. I feel like if I got a Micron, I would also have to get like a, a monocle to go with it. Like, a, you know, a, a monocle like to be able to see that fine. Because that's, that's, that's kind of the level that I'm expecting from a Micron. Is that I'm going to like be able to produce or see details that I'm just like, I need a magnifying glass for. I've done it in the past. I used to do it with an enamel paints. I would wear a monocle and I would close my eye paint and then I'd open my eye to see what I was doing. And it works out really great for really fine details and stuff. But also it kind of has its upper limits because you're just creating detail that most people are never going to see with their naked eye. And it, it also just takes so much time. But that's how I feel if I got a Micron. I feel like I would have to be painting stuff at that level, right? Because the atomization should be, you know, really, really good. 
so I should be able to paint stuff so small. But I don't know, I've never tried one, so we'll see. I know I've painted quite a few stuff. But they're pretty detailed with stuff that is just probably not meant for. You know. My BCS days. It's painting a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm very happy with the 289 Creos. Yeah, dude, the, the Creos is really good. Borrow one from Steve. Psh, man, what? What are you talking about? Borrow. Borrow. Who, why? Why would I ask Steve? I, I'm sure he would be like, yeah, go ahead, borrow it, you know? But I'm just like, yo, he's like, why? He says his own airplane. He's gonna need it. Like, you know? Why can't I just have my own? Why can't I just get mine? I, I just play it. I, I don't know. I probably could. It's just not. That's not the way I roll. To be clear, to be perfectly honestly clear, I have open direct contact with uh, Iwata Airbrushes. Good relationship, with, uh, you know. So, I'm, I'm not going to say I could get an airbrush for free, but I'm sure if I really wanted to and if I said you know, some right amount of words, I probably could end up just getting one sent to me, but that's not how I roll on the reviews. But every airbrush we've reviewed, we've had to pay for and bought with my own money or money that, you know, you guys, basically your guys' money because you guys are the ones watching the videos, but it's my money because I get paid it. <laughs> Anyway, that money is the money I use for reviews and stuff. Um, and yeah, most of all, well, yeah, most of the reviews we've done have been out of my own pocket, and that's just as a way of keeping it honest. Right. The Creos here it was given to me by Artem, so this Creos right here has a little bit of history, and he gave it to me. It's one of the very few ones where I actually kind of received it for free, but. Um, it was kind of those things where I tried it and I instantly fell in love with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not saying anything about that airbrush that I wouldn't have said anyways, because even if I would have paid 200 bucks for it, I still think I would have been pretty happy with it. I think they're only like 120 bucks, which makes it a really good deal. But, uh, you know, I compare it all the time to my Wada Eclipse, because it sprays just like it, like the atomization label is about the same. Um, so yeah, the Eclipse and this go pretty much hand in hand. Right now an Eclipse though is going to set you back like 170 bucks or something, like really expensive. Whereas you could have these Creos from uh, Spray Gunner, you know, like 120 bucks. They even have five, like you could order five of them if you're running a studio or something. Um, and you could save yourself a little bit of money that way as well. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I put this airbrush directly up against my water Eclipse. That's what I would compare it to. Not quite an HPC. Not quite not an HPC because it sprays really good. But definitely like at the same level as an Eclipse. And believe me, the Eclipse is my favorite gun of all time. Like the Iwata Eclipse HPCS is like my favorite airbrush. I feel like the 0.35 millimeter and the aerodynamics on that gun um, let me spray paint I like straight out of the bottle, reduce low pressure, high pressure. It's just that gun, uh, it, it functions really good for the way I like to paint. That's my favorite airbrush. The Creos, I'd pull it right next to it. You know, they're like, they're literally like this right next to each other. Um, and that's like literally going forward, any airbrush that costs more than these do, like that's going to be the direct comparison, right? Is the Creos and the, and the Eclipse here. 
So, you know, like, I've been I've been trying to get a Patriot Extreme. Uh, Artem says Badgers kind of, you know, they do. They take their time fulfilling orders and stuff. So just waiting on those to come in stock at Spray Gunner. But I do have uh, another airbrush already on the way for the next review. Um, so, yeah, those, those will keep coming. It's just going to, it might stall out there on the reviews for a little bit. But there you go. We got all that done. All that done. What was that? Four hours? Three hours? I can't see the time here. Yeah. Uh, was that five, six, seven, eight, three hours? And we got all that done. And I could come back tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll all just do this. We'll just stand it up like this. Look at that. I can just work right here. You know, work right there, work the bottom, and just twist it around a little bit. And I'll have the stuff ready to do the back as well. So I'll get the the stencils in and stuff I need for this um, ready for tomorrow. But you know, for now, like we've got we got all the top and the sides done. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Thank you guys. <sighs> yeah. Oh, now I need to feel like I need to go pee again. So I gotta say a quick goodbye to you guys. Uh, as always. Uh, thank, shout out to our sponsors, uh, Createx, for providing the paint for today's video. Um, shout out to Spray Gunner for providing the links uh, for you guys. So if you guys want to get yourself something nice and also support the channel at the same time, make sure you check out those links next to the video. Go get yourself something nice from Spray Gunner. They get it out to you right nice and quick. Um, yeah, using those links provides a kickback to the channel. Uh, shout out to Createx again. Look at, look at their logo right here at the, at the bottom of the screen. Look at it. Look at it right here. Ooh, you owe me one. Um, and then, uh, um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, it'll probably be about the same time, 5 o'clock tomorrow. We'll finish this up. And then I'll also give you guys a sneak peek, uh, see what I get get done on this car tomorrow. Uh, yeah, as always, shout out to all the members of the Skull Squad. So if you want to help support the channel directly, and yeah, you go over to YouTube. You can join the Skull Squad. It provides these cool little perks. You get behind the scenes uh, shots and early access to the videos and all that good jazz. Make sure you go and you check that out. Also, there's a giveaway running, so down in the links, you'll find a link to the giveaway. And you get five entries. Make sure you go get your entries. There's like 20-something days left. Uh, make sure you go and you check that out. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, oh, also, if you want to get yourself some stencils, as always, and, and they go, like, buying stencils from here, right here. Ooh, look, you owe me another one. Um buying stencils right there again it helps the channel directly out we you, i use that money again to pay the bills around here to provide you guys reviews and get you guys all the information and do all that jazz keep the videos coming uh i think that's about it thank you guys all for watching we'll see you guys in the next video have a good time everybody night night see you tomorrow